New Zealand presents many interesting case studies at the moment that we think are highly relevant beyond New Zealand's shores. As we look at a country uh, looking uh, to, 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 to cope and benefit from all sorts of, of changes uh, that, that are going on. One really interesting case study is PKE, or, or Palm Kernel Expeller, uh, which is a feed used in the, in the dairy industry and presents what we think is a very interesting case study of an industry looking to balance the economics of farming uh, versus sustainability and quality issues and, and also social license to operate. So we wanted to, uh, to take advantage of Emma Higgins being available before she joins the main stage uh, this afternoon. Uh, Emma Higgins is uh, part of our Rabo research team, uh, dairy analyst in New Zealand, um, mm -hmm. based in Christchurch. Emma, welcome to live stream. Thanks, Tim. Hi, nice to be here. Emma, why don't we kick off by explaining what, what PK is? Because mm -hmm. uh, for people outside palm oil plantations in Southeast Asia and the yeah. New Zealand dairy industry, it's not, it's not a it's not an everyday product used. That's right. So it is commonly referred to as, as PK in the dairy scene, yep. um, or, or palm, simply. And palm kernel itself is the byproduct of what occurs in the palm oil process. So you take the palm oil fruit, you essentially crush out the oil, and what is left is palm kernel. So most of it that we get in from uh, from offshore comes from Malaysia and Indonesia, um, the two largest markets. And uh, it arrives into New Zealand uh, and it is what is now uh, quite a staple feed for, for New Zealand dairy farmers to feed out to their livestock. Yep. And it's, there are not many products in the world that globally New Zealand is a really significant consumer of. But, yeah. but PKE is one of it, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's right. And what is really fascinating is the transformation that we've seen in terms of those mm -hmm. import numbers coming through. Yep. Um, you know, 15 years ago, you'd be hard pressed to find a farmer who knew what palm kernel expeller was, or PK, PKE. Yep. Yep. Um, and now today, it's, it's certainly very much a hot topic. Yep. Um, and not only do dairy farmers know quite well what it is, yep. but also the wider New Zealand public. Yep. So explain to us how, how they use, the, use this in, in the ration. Yeah. So, so palm kernel can be used in a variety of ways. Um, and, and this is one of the benefits of palm kernel for, for dairy farmers, is that it's relatively easy to use. So um, at the lower end of the scale, it can simply be fed out into the paddock um, or on a trailer, for example. Mm -hmm. So there's not a lot of um, extreme management required yep. at that end. Um, the downsides to that are obviously there's wastage. So in terms of economics, it's, it's perhaps not the most um, uh, product productive way to, to use the feed. Yep. Um, but alternatively, it can be used on feed pads or actually in the shed itself, yep. where it's really targeted to, to the cows. Yep. And so that's one of the benefits, going back to what I said earlier, of using palm kernel. It is easy to feed compared to grains, for example, where you really have to ration uh, the, the cows and, and monitor how much they're taking in yep. um, to prevent acidosis, for right. example. Um, and, and so palm kernel can be fed on its own, or increasingly it's now being used as part of a blended compound feed. Yep. Okay, so so far it, it sounds like a great tool for the New Zealand dairy industry. You have fantastic pasture growth, you have uh, access to a supplementary feed, you're one of the key buyers of it. Um, it's been relatively economic, particularly yeah. in good milk price years. Yeah. Why, why has it suddenly become an issue? Well, it has been very useful um, and to the point where the dependency has really increased yeah. at the farmer level. Yeah. And we, we've seen that play out in a number of ways. And, and going back to why it's useful, often in times of climatic stress, yep. it's a useful feed because it's, it's cheap compared to other feeds, generally yep. speaking. Yep. It's also very um, flexible. We've talked about that. And it's easy to dial up, essentially. Right. Um, so, you know, in times of, of pasture stress, perhaps, it's easy enough for a farmer to, to pick up the phone, to call their local feed source, and you know, even if the truck is passing by, it could be you know, on farm as, as close as the next day. Yep. Um, in saying that, we have seen increased dependency in terms of its use on farm, and that's played out recently in terms of um, really um, construing the uh, butterfat profile of milk. Yep. 
So at certain times of the year when palm kernel has been relied upon um, and, and pasture growth hasn't quite been there to support the diet, yep. uh, we, we have seen and comments from the manufacturing side suggest that, that the milk fat, the fatty acid composition, shifts somewhat with yep. the use of it. Yep. And that makes it harder for processors to make the end product. Um, consumer specs are harder to meet. Yep. And ultimately for the cooperative for Fonterra, it adds cost yes. to, to their bottom line and, and ultimately to farmers. Yep. So we've seen this arise as quite an issue for the industry from the processing level. And on top of that, we're also seeing the, the social license to operate effect come through yep. as well. Yep. So talk, talk to us a, a little bit about um, the, where that social license mm. to operate issue comes from. Sure. So, and it all stems back to the fact that we do import it from countries like Indonesia and Malaysia. Yep. And so, uh, you know, there have been challenges with deforestation in those yep. areas of the palm plantations. And uh, so one argument that is being perceived is that the use of palm kernel further generates that deforestation process. Yep, yep. Um, now, the, the, the flip side of the argument that farmers would suggest is that actually, as we talked about earlier, Palm kernel was simply a byproduct yep. um, of, of the palm extraction, palm oil extraction process, yep. and that simply, if they weren't using it, it would it would go elsewhere into right. the value chain, or or simply not at all and be disposed of elsewhere. Yep. So that's that's the flip side argument, um, but increasingly with the rise of social media um, and you know, other sources of information. Um, the perception of, of many New Zealanders now yep. is that simply palm kernel is no longer an acceptable feed to be heavily relying on in the dairy industry. Yep. And, and I think that's some of what we're seeing playing out now from the company perspective. Yep. So companies have actually announced changes to, to, to their uh, actual regulations of supply, haven't, right. haven't they? What, what, how, what did they entail, Emma? So the big change really came through in 2015 with Fonterra. Yeah. So at that point in time, Fonterra announced that they would be uh, tracking and monitoring the milk fat composition of farmers' milks on a daily basis, um, and that they would continue to track that um, across the course of a period of time and just really work out what was happening with, with the profile. At that point in time, a voluntary amount of three kilograms per cow per day was offered. You mentioned there the term social license to operate. Um, and social license to operate is very different from market demand or market <coughs> pressure. And just to explain that a little bit further, um, a market pressure is when your consumers downstream or the companies that, that process your milk in this example are asking you to enforce changes in, in your production system. So in this case, they might be asking you to remove PKE because they're worried about sustainability issues. Uh, social license to operate is more about the, the pressures coming from the local community who aren't necessarily buying your product at all. So, uh, and this is really pertinent in New Zealand because mm. uh, as you know better than I, around 95% of New Zealand's milk is exported. Mm. So largely the market and the end customer is not the people with whom New Zealand dairy <laughs> farmers cohabit with and, and who vote for the governments that enforce legislation. So it's been very much a social license to operate issue uh, rather than a pressure coming, coming downstream. Yeah. yeah. And and so, the social license to operate, I think that element is coming out further yep. as we're progressing from this. Yep. And so, um, the, the rules are certainly in place at the Fonterra level, but we're also seeing it take place at other companies yep. as well. And so, they are offering their suppliers new and different programs to incentivize them, yep. perhaps not to use palm kernel. And the hope there certainly is what you've talked about around um, the social license to operate, maintaining that. Um, and, and also future-proofing New Zealand's dairy industry uh, image offshore yep. as well. Yep. And playing to the consumers that you've, you've identified. Yep. But the social license to operate part also does impact locally. If you think about the impact on the feed community within New Zealand, yep. palm kernel is, is obviously an important feed, imported feed, and the, the local grain growers have, have often argued that, you know, 
the same production response could be met from using local produce. Right. And so the, the local social license to operate piece is still being worked through, yep. and the opportunity is now there for the local grain growers yep. to actually maximise perhaps on some of these changes that are coming through at the company level. Yep. And and I think we're seeing that take place actually across the course of the season. Yep. Because uh, the tail end of New Zealand's production has, and I think it will uh, will drop off quite sharply, yep. markedly, yep. because we have seen weather conditions turn unfavourable. <clears throat> Yep. And so as part of that, um, less palm kernel will be able to be used given the new changes from Fonterra. And it provides an opportunity for some of the local feed sources to really play a role. So yep. it's helping the wider New Zealand community, arguably. Yep. Yep. <coughs> so Emma, as, as New Zealand <coughs> goes down this path of using less PKE uh, in, 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 in the feed, um, are there, are there secondary benefits? You, you and I both attended last year a series of, of, of really um, interesting, I think highly relevant um, uh, sessions uh, un under the, 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 the headline of, of the Pasture Summit uh, last year it, it, that was looking in New Zealand, bringing the Irish and dairy industries together to look at, at the benefits of, of a pure pasture um, uh, focus for the dairy industry. So what might some of the secondary benefits be of New Zealand moving away from PKE and, and back to pasture? That's right. It goes back to reputation and integrity yep. of our marketing claims. Yep. And, and ultimately, the companies are trying to move towards the, the higher value products. Yep. And some of our end consumers, particularly in those larger consumption markets in the US and Europe, yep. are demanding that their, their food comes with a short list of ingredients. Yep. And, and milk is obviously one of them, but, but it goes further into the import side of things as well. Yep. So if we are truly trying to market ourselves and our product as being grass fed or, or pasture fed, um, reducing the use of palm kernel certainly plays into that. Yep. Um, some companies obviously looking to really create a, a pure product, which is PKE free and command a premium for that. Um, but, but for the wider uh, dairy industry itself, reducing the use of palm kernel certainly goes hand in hand with our existing image and yep. brand reputation as well. Yep. Um, keeping in mind that it certainly does play an important role at that farm gate level of providing an option where climatic conditions perhaps sometimes fail. Yep. And the means are certainly there, generally speaking, for, for feed to use um, in that way. Um, at a general sense, but, but the opportunities for New Zealand going forward, if we remove this feed, are certainly opened. Yep. That very much plays into what we've discussed before as the New Zealand origin mm. story right. of, of the clean, green, pristine environment mm. producing high quality foods for, for, for places offshore. Yeah. And other things I think that were touched on in that summit that, that were really pertinent is uh, that the, the simple fact that grass-based dairy can be highly effective and mm. in some ways removing something like PKE can, can enhance the disciplines around yeah. that. Um, secondarily, the possible marketing opportunities that you've mm. touched on for, from pure grass-based mm. uh, based systems. Um, but also what was touched on and we're waiting to hear more of through the course of the year is potential health benefits of, of, of grass-based milk that I think is... is um, something we might hear more of in future. That's right, the next level of, of marketing and claims, but um, not marketing so much as more truth telling, right? Yep. About the actual product itself. Yep, yep, okay. Emma, thank you very much for joining us here this morning. Thanks, um, Tim. You're heading to main stage shortly. Mm. Uh, just for our listeners who can't make it, what will be your panel be addressing this afternoon? We are going to be touching on some of the things that we've already talked about, particularly around the challenges um, that we're seeing across the agri landscape, yep. um, some of the innovations that are out there, but, but also some of the challenges on the capital front too. So yep. a, a wide variety of topics. Excellent. Yeah. Well, Thanks, enjoy Tim. your afternoon. I look forward to seeing you up there. Thank you. Um, and I'll catch you shortly. Thank you. Thank you.